Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're going to go ahead and try to clean an oxygen sensor. I'm just going to be using carburetor cleaner. I've heard from other mechanics, read articles online and in various places that people have used this. They claim that it works. Other people have used intake, valve, or other kind of cleaners as well to clean these. Personally, I'm not a fan of that. I would recommend just replacing these in general because when they go, most of the time, it's just time to replace them. They're not that expensive and they play an important factor in the performance of your vehicle with your fuel and all that. So I would just recommend replacing them. But for the sake of this video, we're actually going to test carburetor cleaner on it. We have a vehicle that has an O2 sensor that actually has failed and the engine code is saying that that particular oxygen sensor is bad. So we were going to go ahead and replace it, but we figured, hey, now's a good time to actually test the carburetor cleaner, see if it really works. So that's what we're going to try in this video. So let's get started. One of the things that I'm not going to be going into in this video is the functionality of the O2 sensors and the terminology used. If you want to dig a little more in depth with that, as far as understanding the upstream, downstream, sensor one, sensor two, bank one, bank two, all that, you can check out my video via the link above. In that video, I go into pretty much an overview of O2 sensors covering their functionality, terminology, the importance of them in the vehicle and all of that. So you can check that out above. So for this video, we're just focusing strictly on just the cleaning process and whether or not that in fact will work. For this task here, what we're going to be using, you're going to need some carburetor cleaner or you can use intake valve cleaner, things like that. I'm using carburetor cleaner for this video, but there's some other uh, spray cleaners that will work as well. You want a ratchet. You're going to need a socket for removing oxygen sensors. And you'll see here how it's cut out here. That way it'll, the sensor will slide into there and then you can still grab onto the, to the uh, nut itself to get it off. And then sometimes a breaker bar isn't a bad thing. If you got one that's on there really tight, a breaker bar may be needed. So these are the components here that we're going to go ahead and use for this video. As uh, mentioned at the beginning, the whole point of this video is to see if carburetor cleaner will actually work. So this is what we're going to be using for this video. We have the sensor in this plastic container. We're going to go ahead and spray it with the carb cleaner and see what, uh, what's going to come off of it. You can see some of the junk coming off. You want to make sure that you get in all these holes in here. We spray that up. Clean it real good. You can see the fluid down here at the bottom. Look how dark that is. All the carbon coming off of this thing. So as far as that goes, I mean I can see this doing something, but the test is yet to be seen when we actually put it in the vehicle and see if that's actually... You want to make sure you, you have the holes here. You want to make sure you get it all in there. Look at that. Here's all the card cleaner that was dripping out of the sensor. Definitely a lot of junk. With this one here, because we're not removing it from the vehicle, we're just going to spray it. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the dirt coming off of this thing. A mess. I'm going to finish. You want to make sure you get through all the holes. We're going to go ahead and clean it real good. We'll be right back. We finished cleaning it. You can see there all the carbon is gone. You can see through all the holes here, everything looks good. We went ahead and let it dry, so now we're ready to put it back on. We're going to hand tighten it, and then we'll go ahead and use the, the socket to uh, tighten it to the proper torque. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and put this on, and uh, we'll be right back. We'll start up the vehicles, take a look at it, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and ride this thing out for the rest of the week, put a lot of miles on it, and then we'll be back to conclude whether or not it in fact worked or whether it needs to be replaced. The sensor's been properly tightened. Everything is good, secure. 
we're going to go ahead and lower the vehicle down, start it up, and then uh, see what happens. Okay, so we went ahead, we cleaned the O2 sensor, we put it back in. I went ahead and cleared all the engine codes, so that way we can get a clear reading on this. I'm going to go ahead and start up the vehicle. We're going to monitor the O2 sensors here off of the ECU and see, make sure that they're performing properly. And then, as mentioned before, we're going to go ahead and come back to this video probably in about a week or so, give some time for the vehicle to be driven a few hundred miles and see if this really does work, and then we'll come to, up to our conclusion. So let's go ahead and start the vehicle, and we'll check the charts and see how things look. Here's our O2 sensors that we're tracking. We have bank one, sensor one up top, bank one, sensor two. Then we have bank two, sensor one, bank two, sensor two. So you can see them moving and pretty much your, your upstream sensors or your sensor number ones, you want them to have more of a up and down motion as we're starting to see appearing here. These are our sensor ones, bank one and bank two, because they're doing what they need to do, burning the oxygen, and then whatever works its way through, these are our sensor twos here on the back side. These are the ones located before the catalytic converter. These are the ones located after. Everything seems to be working properly. Everything is doing what it needs to do. It looks good. As we're looking here on the charts, everything is working properly. These are our upstream sensors here, bank one, bank two. These are our downstreams, bank one, bank two. These always, you want them to be more functional and more movement. These here will balance out as things warm up and the vehicle is kind of brought more up to operating temperature. Now, your sensor ones or your, or your upstreams, they're the ones that are located before the catalytic converter. Your twos are located downstream after. As mentioned earlier, you can check out my video on understanding more about O2 sensors for functionality, ter um, terminology, all that to go more into depth on that. But right now, everything looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drive this vehicle for a few hundred miles and then make sure that that's still going and that there's no check engine codes for the oxygen sensor as we were getting before with the P0154, which is the bank two upstream sensor on this vehicle. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that and then we will be back to give our final conclusion on whether this cleaning process works or not. I went ahead and reset the tripometer so that we, we can see exactly how many miles we put on this sensor now that it's been cleaned. Engine temperature is almost to operating temperature. Let's check the gauges now and see how things are still looking. We have the engine up to operating temperature here and the sensors look very good. You can see the two on the left which are the bank one and two upstreams are doing their job bouncing up and down. They're usually going to be a little more erratic and then the sensor twos are the ones that are more stable because the sensor ones are doing their job. So, so far so good. It's looking good. We only put a half a mile on it just driving it around to get it up to temperature, but the real test will be after we drive this thing for a few hundred miles. So the sensor's been replaced. We took it for a quick spin, let the engine warm up. So far everything looks good on the, on the charts where we're tracking it through the ECU, through the OBD2 sensor. Now the real test will come as we actually put it into full um, operation with its regular use in the course of about a week and then we'll cycle back and we'll conclude this video and see if that cleaning with the carburetor fluid did in fact work or as I'm inclined to think is that it's going to have to be replaced anyway. If it does work then great then that's that's a plus but if not it just needs to be replaced anyway and we'll cross that bridge at a later time. So we'll see you in about a week and we'll see how this thing holds up. Okay so we're back here in the garage with the vehicle. We only were able to drive it about 42 miles started to get the rough idle service engine soon light comes on so i'm suspecting that the sensor is still failing and that the cleaning did not work as i've always suspected but what we're going to do now we're going to go ahead and connect to the car's computer via the obd2 bluetooth scanner see what the error code is and then at that point we'll be able to confirm whether or not it is the sensor if that's the case as i mentioned before we're probably just going to go ahead and just change it out completely and replace it so let's go ahead and connect to it and see what it says to OBD. Okay, now that we have the connection, let's go here, check default codes.
what we're getting now is not necessarily the specific code that the O2 sensor would generate. However, this is a powertrain system to lean and bank two. It's more of a generic code, can refer to several things, but one of them is a failing O2 sensor. So considering that we were already dealing with the failing O2 sensor before, and we're getting this, we're going to go ahead and assume that that is in fact the O2 sensor that is not performing properly. Uh, what we could do is drive the car even more in, in order for the ECU to actually confirm that oxygen sensor, but we're not going to do that because it's already idling rough to begin with, so we're just going to go ahead and swap that out. Well, this pretty much wraps it up. As we saw here, we went ahead, we cleaned the O2 sensor with carburetor cleaner. We only got about 40, 42 miles out of the sensor before it started tripping the code again, rough idle, all that stuff. I'm not a big fan of cleaning these. Um, if you want to see more, more in depth as far as understanding O2 sensors and how to change them out, you can do so via the link above where I showed how to replace an O2 sensor in one of my vehicles. That's what I recommend doing. You can get these sensors depending on your vehicle. They range anywhere from $60 to $70 on the low end to maybe about one, about $100, $150 bucks on the high end. But then you don't have these issues. Like in this case here, you got to remove the sensor anyway. You got to clean it. You waste that time and then you're just getting a few miles out of it before you got to do it again. I know some people say that, that you can clean them by letting them soak in gasoline, all these things. My view is they're not that expensive. Just replace the thing, get it done right. That eliminates you going down the road, having a rough idle, things going wacky again. It can also affect your, your gas mileage as these go to fail. So this pretty much wraps up this video. Based on what we saw here with carburetor cleaner, I know other people have recommended using other cleaners and gasoline and all that stuff. I didn't try that. I'm not going to because, like I said, I'd rather just replace it. But at least with carburetor cleaner, as we saw, it doesn't work. You might get a few miles out of the deal and then it's over with. So I hope this video helped you out. I hope it was informative. Please send me any questions or any comments. I would love to hear from you. As mentioned already, and I'll have some links here at the end of this video, I have some videos where I did pertaining to O2 sensors as far as replacing them. Did another one on understanding them, as we mentioned at the beginning of the video. So you can check those out if you want to kind of grow in your knowledge about these and understanding what they do. So anyway, please like the video, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.